Excellent. Okay, thank you. So the Noon Report project is an initiative of our Smart Maritime Council, which is a, a membership group of maritime stakeholders looking to collaborate on ways to improve the digital capabilities of the industry, to find ways to allow data and information to flow more easily and to increase the efficiency of the supply chain for everyone's mutual benefit. Um, you'll see from the slide here, we have a nice mix of representatives from all corners of the industry, vessel owners and managers. We have technology providers, finance, legal insurance, all covered. We have class societies as well. So uh, it's, it's a group that includes a wide range of different perspectives. Um, this council holds private meetings alongside our public conferences like we've had today uh, to discuss industry issues and try to identify projects where we can work together uh, on issues that might prove beneficial to the industry at large. Um, the picture here on this slide is uh, the, with all of these maskless people breathing all over each other. This is our Copenhagen conference back in October 2019. Um, and it was during a brainstorming session at the council meeting alongside this conference that the, the noon report was first identified by the group as a, as a simple, widely used, but potentially data rich item that could benefit from work on standardization and automated data collection. Um, this session was followed uh, a few weeks later by uh, another session hosted by one of our council members, Dell Technologies, at its innovation centre here in Ireland, uh, where the idea was sketched out a little bit further and began to take shape just a little bit. Um, here's some of the early whiteboard work from one of our sessions at Dell. I'm not really sure what this was meant to represent, but you have to start somewhere. Fast forward a few more months, and this is a picture from our council meeting in Rotterdam in February of 2020, um, just at a time when those of us here in Europe were still unconcerned about some virus that was starting to disrupt things in Asia. Um, this picture here was taken after our council had just voted to adopt the ISO 19848 data standard as a, an officially supported standard for our projects. And this was a standard developed and already in use among the Japanese maritime cluster, including our council members, MTI, part of the NYK group, and, uh, and Class NK, and um, if you were watching earlier, you'll have seen Dr. Ando Hideyuki speaking about this and about the ISO 19848 standard. So this has become an important element of the standard new report project. Um, and actually in the picture here, if you look, you can see three of our panelists today. They're in the room from, from the council meeting in, uh, in Rotterdam, uh, as well as our chairman in the room with you there in Singapore, the, the talented Mr. Schellenberger. So soon after this meeting, uh, 2020, went crazy and um, all of our further meetings for the year went online. But over the course of the next six months, doing our online work, we tried to put together a basic structure to provide a standard framework to describe new report data. Uh, it's very detailed and complicated. Um, I'm definitely, I'm sure you can't see it here because it's going to be tiny on your screen. But the key elements to point out is that it's organized into a list of uh, defined common new report data points on one side there. Um, each of these corresponds to a unique ID based on ISO 19848 naming structures for data collection. And each data point then has required standard units which line up with ISO 19848 uh, and also incorporates the standard units in ISO in the ISO 80,000 uh, section. Um, maybe to zoom in a little bit, something you can actually hopefully see, uh, this is a smaller section of the, the framework template with just the three columns. So we have the data points, the ISO 19848 standard ID and the reporting format. Um, these are about the first 25 of about 85 data points included in the list currently, uh, though quite a few of these are different defined options for the same thing, so you wouldn't use them all. For example, there are separate entries depending on whether you're reporting in nautical miles or kilometers, for example, or reporting your ETA to the berth as opposed to a pilot station. So there'll be different options depending on uh, what your own operations ask for. So we got this structure in place and in the, the latter part of 20, 2020, we began working on a proof of concept phase, phase, which involved two sets of activities, testing the potential for automated data collection from shipboard systems for translation into a usable format, and then translation of collected noon report data into a standard format that could be used for analysis by software applications without the need for further customization. So this, uh, this phase has involved two of our shipping company council members from the list you saw at the beginning, uh, Stolt and OSM. 
um, along with assistance from other members, uh, technology companies, Dell and Wartzilla, and uh, our maritime software provider member, IB Marine. Um, to talk about our auto extraction of data um, part of the project, Stolt was working with Dell and particularly Dell's subsidiary company, Boomi, to use uh, Boomi technology to find a way of automatically extracting data from existing shipboard systems, uh, looking particularly at areas like NMEA and Modbus, sources that were already on board the ships. Uh, Wart Setup also provided assistance here with, uh, with APIs to smooth access to some of the systems um, based on their bridge systems and their simulators. <clears throat> I received a file actually last week from Dell with some 62,000 lines of NMEA data strings that they'd automatically generated in the test system over the course of four months. Um, some of those recorded every second, some less frequently, um, but they can be used to automatically populate parts of the new report. Um, I've put a couple of quick examples of the par parameters being automatically extracted on this slide here. Um, so on the slide here, you can see the NMEA string for recommended minimum navigation information. And it looks like gobbledygook, just like that, but it includes a number of useful data points, you know, if you look at it, uh, specifically these data points here uh, within these sections. So you can see the current time in yellow within the data string. Um, you can see the GPS position within the data string, speed over ground in knots, uh, the true heading, and the date, just if you know the correct section where to look. And this was some of the work that was done by, by Dell, Dell Boomi in trying to find some of the sources on the vessel and get data from the existing sources on the vessel to add to the new report. Uh, one more example there, the NME, NMEA string for distance traveled through water. Um, so that's there, it gives you the nautical miles, um, and you can use that then for your, add up the different pieces to add to the noon report puzzle. Um, Dell also tells me that they're now collecting live data from a stolt vessel for the project, which we might speak about uh, later on in the discussion, um, which can be packaged to files and translated into usable formats. Of course, to demonstrate any kind of standardization in data formats, it was imperative that we had more than one shipping company involved, obviously. Um, and we were lucky enough to have Ship Manager OSM, another Smart Maritime Council member, agree to join the project and collect new report data in the standard format to help us with our proof of concept. OSM's contribution involved data collection by one vessel each day for the whole 31 days of December 2020, with each day's new report entered into a template like this one here, and then exported as an XML file. The XML part is relatively simple. It's a collection of records um, that each include our three standard elements. So the data point, a value in the standard units, and the unique ISO 19848 ID tag for that data point. And this sample here covers just three data points to, to make it viewable on the screen. Uh, and this is just test data, so it's not to share OSM's data publicly. But um, interesting, interestingly enough, the, the zip folder that OSM sent over with the entire month of actual standard data points in XML from the vessel in service, um, total just 59 kilobytes of data, which I find quite impressive to get so much data about the vessel in such a small package. Uh, that folder was then uploaded to our maritime software council member, IB, um, who now will be able to use that information to perform basic voyage performance analysis on select parameters, just simply by applying the agreed standards on the application side. So as a final slide, the grander goal here, and with apologies for such a long introduction to a panel discussion, um, we'd like to see more and more shipping companies come together to agree on standard formats for their data and to give vessel operators greater control of this digital ecosystem. Um, if a large number of ships are requesting a single standard form of data, then we think their equipment suppliers would be more likely to provide it, or they will risk losing out to a competitor who may satisfy those data demands from a larger market base. Uh, similarly, if shipping companies are using standard formats for their data, application developers will be able to spend more money on developing cool things for that larger market and less money on customized development of the same system for individual users. That will end up bringing down the cost of applications and increase the quality of the software available. Um, in general, shipping, com shipping companies have had a poor record when it comes to cooperating in this manner, but as our conference chairman, Peter Schellenberger, noted in his opening address this morning, seems a very long time ago now, 
Um, <clears throat> the number of vessels that we need to create a critical mass may not be that high. We have a dozen strong players of shipping companies working together that may be enough to really shape the industry. So without further ado, uh, to discuss these issues, uh, let me introduce our panel for today. Joining me are Rui Pinto, Engineering Applications and Connectivity Specialist with Stoll Tankers, uh, Ashwani Agarwal, Head of Marine at OSM Maritime Group, Katerina Serini, Head of Strategic Partnerships and Business Development at IB, and Sean Crowley, Electrical and Automation Manager for Stoll Tankers. So I will close down my screen share now so we can have a good view of all of the panelists. Um, panelists, thank you all for joining me. Katerina seems to Katerina seems to be missing for the moment. Um, hopefully, we can get her in shortly. But um, in the meantime, maybe we can start with um, a quick introduction, guys, uh, of yourselves. Um, I'll start, Sean Crowley, with uh, you, my fellow Irishman. If you could maybe just say a few words and introduce yourself to our audience. <laughs> Yes, uh, good morning uh, and good after, afternoon, all. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I wish I was in Singapore also. Uh, it was actually one year ago I was uh, there, was the last time just, I managed to get out just before uh, all the flights stopped, so that was good. Um, yeah, I'm working with uh, Stolt uh, for the last uh, 25 years, uh, sailing on our ships and then in our office since 2002. So, um, yeah, sending data from uh, uh, ships to shore is something that installed. we've been basically working on for many years. Um, and, of course, the noon report, yeah, we tried to uh, digitize that back uh, on our Danish ships uh, 25 years ago. So we had a standardized noon report. And so it's uh, it's something we are all shipping companies. Yes, we're <laughs> we we still have uh, follow the same standard uh, every year, set every day. Send a noon report. Um, yeah, so that's uh, this project has been very interesting to uh, try and uh, digitize it and get it in the standard. Brilliant. Standard Thank you, Sean. Uh, okay. <laughs> under you on my screen is Rui Pinto, your colleague, Rui. Thank you for joining us. Um, would you like to say a few words about yourself? I know this is your favorite part of, uh, of every discussion. Good uh, morning, everybody. Good evening. My name is Rui Pinto. I'm the connectivity and application specialist for Stock Tankers for the past three years. And I, before of that, I'm a marine electronic engineer for more than 12 years. And I joined here the team, me and Sean. And yeah, we most of the main thing I do is to do get the vessels connected and try to get the vessels automated and all these new buzzwords that are running around. Hmm. Uh, we try our best, not always possible, but uh, we yeah, thank you very much, Rui. Um, Ashwani, newer member of the group who thankfully came to our rescue late in 2020 when we were looking for help. Um, would like to say a few words and introduce yourself to the audience? Sure, I think, uh, yeah, uh, my name is, uh, is visible on the screen as well. I'm working with the OSM for the last uh, six years nearly. Now I am head of Marine for uh, the Singapore fleet, uh, leading the team of Marine and HSEQ personnel. We're looking after the, that side of business for 60 ships. I've been associated with these uh, with several fuel performance reporting uh, projects in the past. Uh, that is uh, when I came across this idea from, uh, from Rob about standardization of data which I believe should answer a number of issues, which I think, which Rui just mentioned, uh, we are all trying to automate a lot of things, but then all of it uh, kind of, you know, hits a roadblock. And what you are doing, what we have started actually here is maybe the answer to all those issues. So looking forward to it. Brilliant, thank you, Ashwani. Um, uh, I, we're still struggling to get uh, Katerina in here, um, so we'll, we'll continue while uh, we try to get her. She was logged in before and disappeared. Um, but uh, the, the first of the, the questions that I had that I wanted to put to you guys was um, was about the noon report uh, process. And maybe, I mean, it will be familiar to any shipping people out there, but I'd be interested to hear about your own processes for collecting noon reports for the moment. Ah, but before we get to that question, Katerina has joined us now. Katerina, 
Welcome. Would Hi. you like to say a few words, say hello to the audience before we move on to the questions? Yes, yeah, sure. Sorry about that. I'm uh, connecting with my mobile uh, phone. I don't know why the connection today is uh, quite bad. You know, IT stuff as usual. <laughs> I'm Caterina Cerri. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm Caterina Cerrini from IB. I'm in charge of strategic partnerships and business development. IB is an uh, Italian-based uh, multinational company specialized in uh, asset management software solutions since uh, 1985. And I've been following all the uh, issues relating to the standardization and interoperability among the systems also through some European projects. And this is uh, always a uh, hot topic uh, uh, within our industry. So I'm looking forward to uh, listening and uh, taking part of this uh, discussion with you today. Super, thank you, Katerina. Um, okay, the, the question I was just starting on was uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, our uh, gentleman from Stolten OSM maybe to um, to compare their current noon report processes, how, how you collect your noon report data now, how you prepare your noon reports, and maybe compare that with an ideal process of how you would like to do it if, if everything could be provided to you by technology providers and you could get everything the way you wanted, where would be the big difference, differences between what you're doing today and, and what the ideal situation would be? Um, maybe Ashwani, maybe we can, we can start with you. Yep, uh, right now the process is quite manual. People are feeding in the information into various formats. Of course, different types of vessels have different uh, types of reporting some vessels which are chartered, sub-chartered and, and sub-sub-chartered, uh, they have like seven to eight different formats of noon report. So what they do is, is just uh, fill up different formats manually, take the data from different instruments and feed it into, uh, into the, the, the system email format, HTML format, whichever it may be, or a software even, and they fill it up manually. So is that, an issue, as a ship manager, is that an issue, the fact that you're dealing with ships from different owners, or is it even you know, ships from the same owners using different systems on a ship-by-ship -ship basis? It's just it's just a free-for-all that every ship has its own system. Now, this is something which every ship will have, Rob. Uh, every ship. And it takes a considerable amount of time for the, for the guys on board. So it's literally a thing of from ship to ship, there is really almost no standardization of any of it at all no no not that i would say or you know not that that would amount to to standardization uh really you look like you kind of understand what ashwani is saying here i'm mean, even within stolt with you guys having your own vessels i mean is, is it still a process that is different between different ships because of legacy systems and legacy processes etc Basically, for the for the time being, what they are doing with we are using platform called Vestlink, and that is a full manual report to the crew needs to go around and write it down, kilowatts hour consumption, uh, distance travel, everything needs to be done manually, and just uh, and then send it via email, and then becomes kind of automated system after that, but it's still the data collection. It's, uh, it's the same in all the vessels. It's still manually done, just filling up the fields on the report, nothing more. Uh, but is at least the, is is that a standard across all of the vessels? Even, even yes. though you have, and you all use the same, the, you use the same software product. But it's yes, we use the same the same platform and the same report for all the vessels. Some vessels will, if they don't have that specific information, they just put not applicable. Okay. But most of them have the same. Um, so the, the fact that it's all manual now, I mean, we've spoken about the work that you've done uh, with Dell in trying to access some of the systems and get data, which is not usually readily available, but uh, I know it hasn't been <laughs> particularly easy. Um, are, are there any areas where you're hopeful where it's it's a possibility that, um, you know, there may, there may be more data that you can get your hands on that you would like to have? Or is it still that most of the systems that you want to get data from are just locked down and not available? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a very wide range answer there because most of the equipments, some data are being outputted and some equipments not. But most of the one that is there is just a matter of you go and try to figure out what is the data. 
sometimes a, a string of, of of numbers and and commas divided it means nothing to a lot of people but if you really know what you're looking for then you can start figure it out and the problem is to also is the age of the equipment most of the equipment is 20 years old 30 years old is a very old technology and old technology to interface with new technology it's a big big headache to be done everything is possible everything is doable but also the cost of those those trials and errors it's too high and these on these times it's very difficult for every any company to to to, to just try to burn money like that so what you maybe uh, maybe sean this might be one that you could chime in as well the, the days that you're getting now even it's manually collected but at least you have it all in a, one form that you get from all the ships even if it's manually entered are you using that as a basis for voyage analysis performance analysis at the moment or is it more just something that is collected goes in a file until the, the next one comes in and goes in the file with it uh, no we uh, we do use it yes of course we and we have uh, we have a, 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 an agreement with uh, echo insight from uh, um, the dmv veracity platform so that also takes the data in from there so we have uh, specific fields which we monitor on this um, but as Rui mentioned the initial process is all has to be uh, still do your manual rounds in the engine room and check all the details and uh, then put it in in type it into the computer and then it's digitized so yeah we're we're looking of course uh, we've Rui has uh, done various trials of getting this data automatically put in which is, uh, I think that's the best the best way to do it, yeah? But uh, at least we do have the well, good starting base that we do use a, one common platform across all the fleet. And how helpful have your various OEMs and providers been in supporting you in that process? Mm, yeah, uh, as, as Rui mentioned, but uh, yeah, we have some challenges, of course. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we all know the... the, the um, we would like to do more, of course, especially with the uh, the engine uh, data, things like that. We could, but yeah, let's just say it's uh, it hasn't been very uh, forthcoming. You know, they uh, tr to try and get all the engine parameters from the various uh, makers. Yeah, I think a lot of them like to keep it to themselves, and of course, uh, uh, ask you to pay for like value added services, thing, things like that. But uh, yeah, we, we need. That's why we're one of the main things for this uh, group. We've been. Uh, anxious to uh, work together with some of the, the main partners are on this and yeah we've had a lot of very good uh, discussions so we hope we can move it further yeah because there is a lot more things that we can do than just uh, uh, you know we want to be able to use it more for you know machine learning uh, performance uh, main engines auxiliary engines uh, all different things yeah that's that's where the the real benefits lie as well, yeah. Uh, Ashwani, I'll maybe ask you the same question before I come on to Katarina, just um, because it's the same thing that Sean's been talking about. In terms of your providers um, giving you access to data that you want or making it easier or making it difficult to, to get the data you want from these systems, what, what have your experiences been? Yes, exactly but, that. Uh, Katarina, sorry, I just wanted to get Ashwani first and then I want to come with you after they both oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, sure. That's fine. So yeah, uh, actually not much progress, to be honest. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> so is, is, that, and sweet. is that across the board in general? I mean, you, you, know, you don't find many of your equipment providers who have been helpful on this side of things in helping you to get data that you would like to have. I mean, uh, I can name uh, one or two our suppliers. Yes, they have been uh, forthcoming. They have they have worked with us. They have they have been through the through the process, but others sometimes don't even respond. Ouch, <laughs> uh, Katarina, let, let me bring you in here. This, so if we if we move forward from this, if these shipping companies did have access to more data, um, when you're coming from the software side and the application side. Um, what what kind of additional performance benefits do you think application providers would be able to help shipping companies with if they had access to standard data if they had automated data collection i mean in terms of the better products you might have and also uh, cost reduction in the cost it, it takes you to develop products with extra customization for people and also the implementation process when you have to implement 
um, systems on a, on a customized kind of play-by-play -play basis for different chips. I mean, could you maybe explain some of the potential benefits of, of, move, of living in a more standardized world where standard automated data can be collected? Yes, yes. Uh, um, of course, the more automatic data and standardized data we get from the sheep uh, and the more we can talk about the um, uh, reliability of data and, um, uh, and the true value of real-time information. So the, the challenge, as uh, Sean was saying, is exactly this. I mean, uh, it's a matter of data collection improvement first. But uh, the current situation is, uh, is, the, is the, the one that uh, Ashwani and Rui uh, described uh, um, previously. I mean, uh, there is uh, still a lot, a lot of manual reporting on board. So the provider, we have to adapt our systems, our solution uh, with, a, with a collecting uh, system that can be able to gather both automatic and also manual input. Uh, this, is, this is the situation. Our solution indeed is uh, designed to, uh, to gather and to analyze uh, both kind of uh, data and to translate them into useful information for, uh, for, for, the, for the ship owner, for the fleet manager, because we collect data from automation, from uh, all automation and uh, all kind of uh, systems, uh, existing systems on board, uh, torque meter, flow meters. Uh, I'm talking about the performance of the fleet, but also from ACDIS, uh, from AES, uh, and uh, together with this uh, um, uh, specific kind of, of data, no matter of, uh, of the format they, they, they are, I mean, we can translate into the correct format, but together with this, uh, we have also the um, vessel reporting tool uh, that is an adapter able to get also data from uh, manual input. Then the, 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 the data logger is, uh, is, uh, is able to transfer data to, to shore and to, to analyze and to give back uh, dashboard and analytics uh, to, um, um, you know, to, to, to support in terms of a uh, final decision, uh, in terms of uh, a decision support system. But um, yes, the, the situation is this one. I mean, uh, the, the exercise we have been doing in the, uh, with the um, standard new report is a very good example of how um, mature um, uh, technology is mature enough. It's a better it's it's a matter of mentality instead. I would say because uh, the availability of data and the standardization of data, but uh, in principle the availability and the ownership of data. Uh, by, by the companies that they, they make uh, the, the data and information available is the first step uh, for the, the cooperation and, and, and to, to go towards a standard uh, process. And, and this in terms of, of costs, what, what does it mean in terms of costs? Of course, if we um, increase the inter interoperability, we, we increase uh, at the same time the opportunity of, of sharing more information among um, several um, stakeholders, several operators uh, at the same time. And thus we have a, a reduction of uh, customized projects, for example, from our side and uh, a uniformity of languages. And, and finally, we can say that we can speak the same language and there will be lots and lots of benefits also for the for the operator. For example, the reduction of the of, of the job uh, of the crew on board. Uh, when 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 you standardize processes and uh, and model, it's much much more easier the the day to day job uh, on board for the crew. Okay, thanks, Katerina. Um, another issue I wanted to touch on. We're kind of into our last ten minutes or so here um, as we finish up. Um, Branching out from the new report a little bit, but also talking about the impact of standards. Um, Sean, we've spoken recently about the, the challenges involved, uh, Sean and Rui, about the challenges involved in complying with cybersecurity requirements and the new cybersecurity requirements that came in at the start of this year, um, which is often not helped by the sometimes haphazard approach to software version management you might see from some vendors. Um, 
in terms of having a greater proliferation of standards and technology adoption in the industry, I presume this would make the whole process much, much easier. Um, is, um, is, is that something you think that it w could have a serious knock-on effect in terms of cyber if, if we started moving more into this, uh, this standardized world? Yes, for sure. It's one of the big, uh, the big things uh, we see a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, some companies are uh, very good. We, I saw one service report yesterday, actually, from one of our main suppliers. Navigation equipment was excellent. All details, uh, software versions, everything fantastic. And then you see others, the main engine suppliers. They go on board to do a service, update software, and absolutely nothing on the service report. No software versions, no nothing. And, you know, we get questioned on that by uh, in our cybersecurity audits and uh, vetting inspectors going on board. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah, we need to have, we need to have more uh, transparency on that from, from uh, all suppliers because it's, we are the end users and we are the ones that are getting, getting these questions. Yeah. How, uh, please show you the latest, uh, engine management software up to date whatever and it's it's hard to show this yeah it's 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 a, it's a challenge <laughs> and are there even internal standards missing in terms of the the vendors having different version different software versions for their own equipment on on different ships i mean they, they haven't even standardized at their own internal levels in, in your experience in some of you know I'm, obviously it's not talking about everybody but in some of the cases that you've dealt with uh yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I presume there is a standard. Everything has to be uh, type approved uh, and uh, checked by class and things like that. But um, we, we don't know that information. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's more a transparency issue then. You you know, those standards just need to be communicated better. So you, you have an yeah. idea of exactly what the, what the situation is. Yeah, like if you, for instance, you see, uh, you get a, an update on uh, Apple or whatever, the software update to tell you exactly what's been done. It's been, uh, you know, this is this is where we need to go to. Yeah. Uh, Ashwani, maybe I can ask you about your experiences with. Uh, have you had any difficulty preparing for these new IMO cyber regulations? Has it been much of a challenge for you guys? Um, no, not much really, because we haven't. Right? One is, of course, uh, we haven't gone down the road of uh, too much automation. So, yeah, we have uh, very few equipments collect connected to the LAN and, and uh, or the, having the option of connecting external sensors and stuff. Okay, but even in terms of um, limited, the the um, the IMO requirements for risk management the, in the SMS and that kind of thing, you you have all that done. You. Um, it was reasonably straightforward, was it? Did you do it on a ship by ship basis or did you have a kind of company wide process for that? Yes, we have been on it for a while actually. We, we did it uh, ship by ship because uh, the equipments, the, 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 the software versions, hardware versions, they vary. So okay. this, is a, this is an exercise which will be required uh, ship by ship by, by, by design, by type of equipment. Okay, thanks. Katarina, I might ask you, I mean, Working with the uh, IDs customer base, have you guys been involved in any of this um, with helping any of these co your client companies to uh, get their systems updated and ready for these cyber requirements, or is that something that you guys are left out of? Well, yes, uh, indeed, uh, every day I should say. Uh, it is uh, there is an, an open table in Italy among the association of uh, ship owners uh, uh, who, who, who are uh, dealing with this stuff. We are uh, looking at the, the, the new standards and how we can support uh, our customers to implement the new regulations. Yeah. Have you had, had any panicked requests of people who come screaming looking for help because they feel everything is a uh... It's a serious problem. No, no, not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. Um, as we're down to our last five minutes, I have kind of one final question I might put to, to everybody. Um, what I'd put down here, uh, what do you think are the next big hurdles to overcome as an industry to make us more digitally enabled? I mean, if you were to pick one, um, are there developments happening already that, you, that give you hope that the future is coming or is progress happening just too slowly to make a meaningful difference. Um, what do you think? What, what are the, the? What would you say is the single biggest hurdle we need to overcome to make some significant progress in this? Um, Sean, you're top in the list here in front of me, so I'm going to start with you. Make my way down, and we'll finish up there. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I just I just have, just have to say one of the, you know for for us involved with this project. Um, yeah, I'm, I you know I have to I have to thank uh, uh, the you know for for um, uh, Mary and Mike Adele because you know this uh, product with the Boomi, for instance, it made the uh, uh, the data gathering and the transformation. Uh, you know, I wasn't aware of these things before, and to be able to use like an industrial uh, uh, piece uh, of equipment to make it uh, much easier to transfer to a standard that we can all re read because uh, Rui was, was gathering the data from various manufacturers. And so it was good to be able to have the one. I think that's that's uh, that's certainly the way a way to go. Uh, and also to see the other things which we had, like uh, Transas uh, was involved with, uh, or sorry, Varsa, Anton. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, various developments uh, we've seen a lot of good things and uh, the main thing for us i think in the future is the data transformation to get a, the one standard from all the different to be able to read it then you can have like for a different uh, like ib and other suppliers it makes it much easier to be able to uh, uh um not sell their services or whatever you know to analyze uh, fuel data all sorts of things but you need to have the one standard coming in and that's why we were happy to back the iso standard uh, that we passed at the uh, at the council meeting in Rotterdam. So I think that's the main, uh, yeah, the main takeaways from this, yeah. It's, uh, you know, to be able to get this, a simple standard, make it easier and hopefully get more uh, manufacturers uh, on board, yeah. Brilliant, thanks, Sean. Uh, Rui, would you be in the same camp? Anything you would add to what Sean said there? No, yeah, I would like to just to add. I agree with Sean. That was the, that's the main core of this, and is that the uh, we we need to share more the manufacturers. We as end users, as owner of the equipment, we need to have the full information of the system, and it should not be something we have to pay for. And for the new stuff that's coming out, should come already standard. That the new standard should be already built it in, so we don't have to go to all these all all over again and again and again. I, I would just like to add that. Thanks, Rui. Ashwani, I guess you would um, join your shipping company colleagues and you know ask your suppliers again to to follow this idea of getting getting together on standards for the data that you will be collecting and make it easier for you to to run the performance of your vessel in an optimized way. Certainly, I think uh, Sean and Rui covered it pretty much uh, square. But uh, yeah, there are companies like IB who have developed their own systems. But uh, if I want to change tomorrow from IB to somewhere else, then I pay again. That shouldn't be, you know, a, a company's. A company has already bought the equipments, and then we are paying for the sensors, and then we are paying for the next time when we change over. So it's just that uh, that, that that this cycle has to stop. Once we pay for the equipment, we should be able to to derive what we need out of it. And you want your choice of applications to be based on. The best applications in the market rather than the ones that you can't get away from because you're locked in absolutely and and development is, is coming uh, whether it's hardware or software i mean uh, even in the previous session somebody was talking about there are two kids sitting in a garage doing something you know so yeah th those two kids will never stop yeah brilliant thank you ashwani uh katarina we will uh, finish up with you maybe a few final words on the, the biggest hurdles that we have left and the big kind of takeaways from the project that you that you've had yes well generally speaking i can say that um, uh, indeed i think that the, the pandemic is a, an accelerator for the automatic collection and for the remote control mm, generally speaking and we should benefit from, from from this and as i said we should adapt our solution, but uh, um, the quality of data collected on board is uh, is the new target. Is uh, is um, the reliability of analytics uh, uh, that can really be the game changer um, in in terms of um, um, helping, really helping the crew and and, and officers uh, to better perform their their fleet. I mean. The simplification of the crew job on board is a, is a very important uh, uh, point. And then, yes, uh, uh, having also an holistic approach and see the overall picture, I agree with Ashwani, there are lots of providers, lots of, of solutions, but 
there are also new uh, upcoming regulation that we have to look at. So um, it's uh, it goes by itself that we have to. To, to, to stay on on the path and 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 to run to to, to try to satisfy uh, the new needs of the market my my takeaways i are the the the, the, the three s uh, oh Katarina's takeaways was herself she took herself away <laughs> from the, uh, the conversation um, <laughs> um, i guess that's technical difficulties in italy um Guys, we've just come to um, 45 past the hour, so that is our time up. Um, I will thank you very, very much for your uh, participation in our panel today and for your participation in the project. Uh, I've learned an awful lot about things I knew nothing about this <laughs> about a year ago, um, and it's been yeah, it's been brilliant. So thanks, thanks so much, so much for your help with the project. Thanks for joining me today. Um, thank you to the audience in Singapore and online uh, for your attention and. Um, yeah, everyone have a great day. And Kathy, we're back to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.